Welcome to Hiking with Mike with today's special Halloween video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I post a hiking video where you see my point of view. And every Monday and Friday, I'll tell a story. And every Wednesday, you get to experience the sights and sounds without me interrupting with my endless babble. If you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Do it right now. Just hit that red subscribe button. You'll be thankful you did. Believe me, your life will improve greatly just by subscribing to this channel. Oh, and uh, make sure you punch that like button. We don't say smash here. We say punch. So punch that like button. And also leave a comment below. Perhaps you have a true scary story to tell. I'd love to hear it. I think everybody would. So today is Halloween, one of my favorite holidays. Today's story is a scary one, and it's a true one. Something that happened to me just days before Halloween. And I thought this was the perfect day to share it. I happen to be in a place off the Appalachian Trail that I haven't been to in a long time. And the last time I was here, I found a body. It was just a few days before Halloween. And on this particular day, my friend and I were going way up north to a hiking trail along the Appalachian Trail that we had never gone on before. Now this particular day, there was threats of late day thunderstorms. There was also an overcast. But the thing about autumn is when there's an overcast, the colors of the leaves really pop. And so our ride to this hiking location was beautiful. And up north is very country. Like the houses are literally a mile apart. They're, you know, neighbors don't have neighbors. And you have to drive miles and miles through forest before you even get to a little old fashioned shopping center. So it was a long drive and we're headed that way. And there's just a creepy vibe. There's just something about an overcast day in autumn right before Halloween. It is just creepy, especially if you're a big fan of horror movies like I am. Like, I was expecting to look into the woods and see Jason from Friday the 13th there, or look over the other side and see Michael Myers, or have Freddy Krueger jump out in front of me. We finally make our way to this parking lot. And it's on the opposite side to the entrance of this trail. Now, this is the first time and the only time so far that I had ever been on this trail. And that is where I am right now. So I went up along this path and it kind of went uphill. And the first thing I discovered was this weird, what looked to me to be a lizard. But the thing is, there are no lizards here. There are no lizards at all in this state. But whatever this thing was, was kind of red and orange with spots on it and very reptile looking. And it looked like it had been eaten. So I had thought that maybe a bird had grabbed it or a large bird, like a bird of prey, and maybe it dropped and it fell into this hiking trail. But either way, I saw it as some kind of omen because it was bizarre and weird. And there was a vibe on this trail that I had not felt any place else. There was something creepy about it. And I guess it was just a bad feeling I had. So meanwhile, it's getting darker out now, getting much darker. And I'm getting a little concerned because the last place that I wanna be during a thunderstorm is the forest. You know, when a, a bolt of lightning strikes a tree and that tree explodes, it is insane. It is insane. Pieces of trees shoot off in every direction like it's nothing. And those are giant spears. And if you happen to be in that area, there is a chance you're not going to survive. So I do not want to be out there during that thunderstorm. So we feel a little bit of raindrops fall. And my friend and I'd say, so what do you think? Maybe get up to the top of the hill and make our way back? And we're like, and I'm like, yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to do. We don't want to get caught out here. So I happened to have my digital camera with me and I snapped a few photos, not a lot. So I put the camera away and we continue going to the very top of this very steep uh, hill. 
and we're following the trail markers. Now, here's the thing about hiking in the fall. The pathway gets covered in leaves, so you can't actually see it. And if nobody had walked on that path in a day or two, it's completely buried. And it's very hard to see, so you gotta follow the, the trail markers, or you could easily get lost. And so we make our way up, and there's some beautiful views up there. And we're looking around, and it's just really nice. But then the rain starts. And so we both say, yeah, we better get back. And we turn around, and the trees are not marked. No markings on the trees. And we both look because you can't find the pathway. And we have never been to this place, so we don't know it. And you can't find the pathway because everything's covered in leaves. And the thing is, is it was a bit windy too. So new fresh leaves were falling where we just walked. So we both look at each other and we're like, what the hell is this? Where's the path? Like, where the hell is it? So I walk back down and I'm looking on the other side of the trees for the markers and I can't find them. And we're like, like, like what the hell's going on? How could we mo lose the markers why and why didn't they mark the other side of the trees so that you can see to get out of here and so we're looking all over for a way out and there is none and we're like what the hell are we gonna do this the storm's coming you can you can feel it the rain is coming down you could hear a little bit of the thunder and we're both starting to panic now because we're out in the middle of nowhere there's nobody around for miles on end and we're stuck in the forest and it's going to thunder and there's going to be rain and lightning. And what the hell are we going to do? And we start panicking. Now, I have never gotten lost in the woods before. I grew up in the woods. I know my way around. I could figure it out. And now we're lost in the woods. And I, I, I'm like, how the hell are we lost in the woods? And so we're starting to freak out. And I'm like, all right, let's think this through. So we, we're up at the top of the hill and we're looking around. We're like, okay, well, the path was over there somewhere. But which way? And we're looking and we're seeing where we thought we walked and it ends up like dropping down into nothingness. And we're like, well, that's not it. And we look over there and we're like, well, that goes up that way. Where the hell is it? It's as if the path just vanished. Like just gone. So now we look to the other way and I'm like, okay, listen. If we listen carefully, you can hear traffic directly over there. So obviously, obviously that is a street. And if we could make a way to the street, then we could just go from there. We could kind of figure out which direction to go and try to find the parking lot from there. And I think we'll be okay. So my friend agrees. So we're like, all right, so we got to walk straight down this hill. There's no path there. It was all like brush and heavy bushes and everything. And there looks like there's some kind of meadow off to the right. And so we're like, all right, let's do it. We'll just keep walking straight. And that's exactly what we did. So we start walking through and it is thick. Now, we're in a location where you have wild animals such as coyotes, uh, bears, um, cougars. You've got uh, bobcats, you know, and they could easily blend into that very thick bush that's out there. And so that starts running through my mind and I'm getting very paranoid. Because you can't see what's in front of you, and you can't see what's behind you, and you can't see uh, on either side of you. That's how thick everything was. And so I am slowly going through, and I, my, my, my heart is racing. I am nervous now. I am so worried that there is something we're going to run into, and this is going to be the end. So we start coming through and getting past this certain area and kind of end up down the hill... And now we're on flat land, but still, everything is still thick. And that's when we notice something off to the right, past the meadow. This old white farmhouse. The paint's peeling off. There's like a rusty old truck out in the parking lot. And it looked like the lawn was kind of mowed a little bit, which indicated that someone might still live there. But we start saying... What if, uh, you know, you know, it, it puts the lotion on its skin or it gets the hose? What if that's going on there? You know, what if Buffalo Bill lives there? And we're both starting to freak each other out. We're like, 
we could run there for help. We could say, hey, you have a telephone, but then we know how the horror movies end up. You know, you go to use the phone, and next thing you know, he's walking out with someone's face on top of his own. I mean, he's wearing a skin suit. He's got claws for fingers. He's got a butcher knife. I don't know. We probably shouldn't go there. And we thought about it. And then we thought, this is why people die in horror movies, because they're so desperate to get help. They're like, fuck it, I'll do it. We can't do it. No, we don't know who's in that house. Look at it. Peeling paint, an old rusty car. I saw that house in Jeepers Creepers. That's the same truck. So we decided not to go there. No, don't go to that house. But now I'm thinking, okay, there could be a bear out here. There could be coyotes out here. There could be a, a cougar that comes running after me and, and tackles me to the ground and eats me. Or Buffalo Bill. What if he's out here? What if he's hiding in the brush? What if the the trail is a, is a trap and everybody walks up to the top and then he knows they're all going to be forced downward because they're all going to get lost because he's the one who removes the trail markers and he's hiding and waiting and next thing you know, there he is and he's got a chainsaw. <laughs> so now I've got these thoughts running through my head and it's now starting to get cold out and... I feel like I'm now in a horror movie. It really did feel like a horror movie. And I didn't quite know if I liked it or not. Because it's Halloween. And I love Halloween. And I love horror movies. And I am a filmmaker. And I've made horror movies. And now I'm actually living one. So we continue. As we walk, the traffic is getting louder. So we clearly know we are getting closer. And we were getting much closer to the road. So I feel like we're on track here. And now I start to see a house kind of through some trees. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, that's it. The road, it's right there. We're almost there. And we were like, you know, we got suddenly like this uh, pep in our, in our walk. And we're walking faster. And we're about to leave. And then we come across this river. Now there's this giant river right there. But here's the thing about the river. It really wasn't that wide. But it was deep, like really deep. And this is the end of October. We had a very cold season that year. And that water is icy, icy cold. Icy cold. So we're like, well, how the hell are we going to get across this? Not only that, it was raining. So guess what? The embankments of the river is all mud. Pure mud. So now we're like... Okay, we could try jumping, but most likely we will land on that mud and fall right into the river. We don't even know how far we are. So what if we're walking for like an hour and we're covered in this soaking wet water in this kind of temperature? What's going to happen? Are we going to get seriously ill? Are we going to actually freeze solid? I mean, we don't know. How deep is this river? You can't even see the, the bottom of the whole thing. Like, we, you know, it's deep. We were like sticking sticks down there and they just kept going and going and branch long branches. I mean, it was deep. Okay, it wasn't deep. It was like six inches. But we just were too afraid to walk in six inches of water. I mean, come on. It's six inches. No, no. It was deep. It was very deep. A couple of feet deep, three feet deep, four feet deep. I don't know. But all I could picture is, is just jumping across it and landing in the mud and sliding down and falling into the river and not being able to get out of the river because the whole embankment is wet squishy mud and all you're doing is fighting for your life so i didn't know what to do and he didn't either so that's when i said all right you know what let's split up i know you're like what no way come on mike you didn't actually say that yeah i did i did you're like i know you're thinking like come on you just talked about watching horror movies and the whole thing about horror movies is when they split up that's when really bad things happen i know i know but the thing is we had to. We had no choice. He had to go on one end to see if he could find an opening, and I had to go to the other. Because we were hoping that maybe the river had a bend in it, and twisted and turned so we could walk along that, that river. And I was looking on the other end, and so that's what happened. And so, I went off my way, he went off his. Unfortunately, he didn't get far. And I was continuing on, and all I could see was more of this thick brush... 
And I'm looking through and I am so paranoid. I could swear I hear things walking in there. And I'm like, there is something living out here. There is something here. I could see that old farmhouse and now I'm thinking like, if there is a, 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 a murderous killer in there, he can clearly see us by the river. And I'm looking and the river just keeps going and I don't see anywhere like any place to jump it or walk across it. And that's when I hear something. Something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. Uh, Mike! Yeah, I think we have a problem here. I froze in my track. I had shivers start to go up my spine and I started freaking because I thought standing directly behind me was a pack of coyotes. And I didn't want to turn around. I didn't want to see what was there, what he was seeing. And I'm just thinking in my head, oh no. Oh no, it's all over. It is all over. And then he continued. Yeah, Mike. I uh, think I found a body. And I just, the hair on my body all stood up. Every little hair stood up. And I did, I'm just like frozen in place. Yeah, yeah, Mike, I'm pretty sure I just found a body. Oh boy, yeah, this is a body. And I just grab my forehead and I start rubbing it and I'm just like, fuck, fuck. Okay, um, I don't wanna see it. Yeah, but you probably should. Oh God. I don't want to see it. No, I don't. Oh, God. Uh, why is this happening? Okay, all right. Uh, I'm coming. I turn around and I start walking over. And there is a body. The thing is, though, there's no head. And there's no hands or feet. It's just, like, ribs and big, long, like, what look like femur bones. And I'm looking at it going, is that human? And he's like, I don't know. I mean, what has bones that big? And I'm looking at it going, I don't know that. Oh man, I mean, maybe it's an animal, but where's the head? There's no head. And where's the rest of it? It's like a rib cage and, and, and the, like the, the leg muscle, the leg bones and, and, little pieces but where's the rest of it oh boy oh my god look my man we should just jump the river and get the hell out of here i mean we were joking about that house but i mean come on it, it might be true that that might be a killer in that house and this this person he killed this person what if he's got the head in the refrigerator oh mike i think we ought to go i don't i don't know yeah we we should call the police yeah, I know, but maybe we shouldn't. Let's just get the hell out of here. Yeah, but just think about it. What if this was someone's daughter? You know, what if she has been missing for like 10 years and nobody knows where she is and we just found her? You know, think of the family, you know, they've been searching for her for so long and now they finally have an answer. They could finally put her to peace and they can get peace. <sighs> yeah, we should call. Yeah, I, th I think you're right, Mike. I think... Yeah, okay. So I pull out my cell phone and I open it up and... Uh... No signal! We're in the middle of nowhere! There's no signal! There's no cell towers here! There's nothing! I can't call anybody! Fuck! So now what are we gonna do? Alright. We gotta, we gotta jump the river! We gotta jump the river. You, you looked on the other end there? I uh, know. It was, it was a body and just, uh, this is the only way. We just gotta jump. Yeah, that's it. Jumping's the only way. All right, all right. Uh, I'll go first. I, I'm, I got longer legs. I'll jump first. I'll see, you You know, if I can make it through. If I could, maybe you can too, okay? All right, all right. Just try not to get into the mud now. Try not to get in the mud. All right, man. But you know, I'll get to the other side because I have longer legs. And then if you end up landing in the mud or landing in the river, I could just pull you through. Yeah, okay. That sounds like a plan. Okay. That sounds like a plan. All right, here we go. 
All right, he's getting ready. He's like, oh, uh, what if I fall in though? I know, I know, I know, we, we might, we might. But what else choice do we have? Yeah, so we're like procrastinating, but we know we have to. So he, he's like, he takes a run for it and he jumps and he lands on the other side, but yes, landed in the mud and started to slide down, but grabbed the ground and was able to, to prevent that from happening. Now it's my turn. And I really reached a point where I didn't want to think about it anymore. And I just did it. And I jumped and landed in that freaking mud. And I start sliding, but thankfully got the hell out of there. Did not end up in the... Well, I partially ended up in the river. My shoes were soaked. So now, as we head on the other side, we're now on the other side of the river, we realize we're in someone's backyard. And then we have the thought of, well, what if this house did it? What if they killed someone and threw them by the river? So we just walked out of there. And now we're on the street. And as it turns out, we can actually see the parking lot where we parked. We actually came out right at that spot. So that was just amazing in itself. So we decided, all right, let's call the police there. We'll call it from there. We go to the parking lot, still no signal. It's really shoddy. We tried and we couldn't get through. So we have to drive. And now we got to drive through two miles of nothingness. No homes, no buildings, no nothing. It, it probably was more than two miles, maybe more like five, because it just went on forever. And finally, we make our way to this state camp. And they have a parking lot. So we try again, and it turns out we got a signal. So we decide that we need to stay there so we can direct the cop and he can follow us. So we call the police. We tell them, yeah, we think we found a body. We, we tell him where we're located. He goes, okay, I'll be right out. So we're waiting now. And while we're waiting, this green pickup truck with a light shows up. And we think that maybe this is related, that this cop called this guy. It turned out he was the park ranger. And we didn't even let him say hello. We just went right into, yeah, the body is up the street. It's a couple miles away. We'll take you right there. And he's just like, oh, okay. Uh, let me get my gear. I will have to give, give credit to this guy because, like, he didn't even bat an eye. I say there's a human body up the street. He didn't even know this was going on. The state police didn't call him. He just saw that we were parked there and he wanted to let us know that the park was closing and wanted to make sure everything was okay. And we just go into, yeah, there's a body up the street. And yeah, yeah if you want to... And then he was just like, okay, I'll get my gear. So I got to give it to him. The guy didn't even flinch. As a coincidence, just as he said, I'll get my gear, a state police officer arrives. And the police officer then talks to that guy. And the guy's like, yeah, they said body? I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go up and investigate. He's like, yeah, I got my gear. I could come too. You know, I got my gear and I got this and that. And, you know, I'll, I'll come. So now, here we are, it is now dark. It is dark, it is cold, there is a full moon out. It is just days before Halloween, and I am in a real life horror movie. And here we are now, leading the police. We're driving with our flashers on, and behind us are the, the police, and then the ranger, and all those lights are on too. And there we all three of us flashing our lights headed off to where there may be a body. And it was such a surreal and bizarre experience. You know, we had now been become part of this thing. So we pull over to the side of the road in front of the house. The cop pulls up behind us. The ranger pulls up behind him. We all get out and we say, yes, officer, the bones are right directly there on the other side of the river. And he's like, okay, okay. How'd you get even get out of there? What would you, and we're like, we had to jump the river. Okay, I see, I see. And we explained what happened. You know, we, it started raining. We couldn't find the way, the path out. We had to take a shortcut. So he's like, okay. Um, and the ranger's like, yeah, I can actually go back there. I can go through the woods. I'll go, I'll go find it. And I was like, okay, great. I got to go tell this house uh, that we're, we're going to be back there so they don't freak out. So now we're standing out there. It is quiet. You're in the middle of nowhere. You don't hear anything. It is dead quiet except for the sound of crickets. And if you're from an area that gets cold in October, you know that sound. 
It's only a few crickets. There's not a lot of them. And everything else is quiet. And you might just hear that slight wind. And that full moon is right directly above the river. Now the cop goes to the house and they won't answer the door. And now we're freaking out. Like, why won't they? We see them looking out the window, but they won't answer the door. And the cop's like, uh, you know, knocking on the door. He's even, he looks in the window, he waves at them and nobody's coming out. And we're like, why aren't they coming out? Do they know something? Are they, do they know what, did they do this? So finally someone answers and the officer says, you know, just wanted to let you know, we're, we're, we actually are investigating something in the back. Nothing for you to worry about, but we just didn't want you to freak out because we're back there. And that was that. Cop comes and rejoins us. Now the ranger walks in the back and you could hear him and the ranger revealed something that made me and my friend look at each other and go, we're idiots. Turned out, right where the right after the bones, the river bends around and heads right to the street and goes under the street. So all we had to do was just walk a couple more feet and we could have just walked right out of the woods and never have jumped over the river. And we would have been right out. So we like looked at each other like, we're idiots. So anyways, we hear him crunching and, and stepping on the sticks and the leaves and everything. And that in itself sounded freaky because it was echoing. And then you hear like a random owl in the back. And the full moon and the it's this cold breeze that's blowing now. And I... I said it, I know I keep saying it, but it was a horror movie. We're in a horror movie, and it was as creepy and freaky as anything could be. And then we hear, I found it. Oh yeah, I, I found it. And the officer yells out, is it a human body? And the ranger says, I don't know. I can't tell. Huh. Ah, uh, it, it might be. I don't know. That freaked me out. Because I was still thinking maybe it's an animal. I was thinking deer. I didn't want to believe it was a real human body. I'm thinking deer. And when this, and I thought this ranger will know right away by looking at it what it is. And he couldn't. He couldn't tell if it was human or not. And that's when the chills went up my spine again and I was like creeped out. And then it got worse because then he says, yeah, I'm going to grab the bones and put them in my sack. Uh, I'll, I'll do some analysis on it and see what I what, what it could be and see if it's human or not. And the officer's like, okay, that sounds great. And then he starts grabbing the bones and you could hear the bones banging into each other and echoing throughout the forest. And hearing the sound of those bones, that did it for me. I was like, I want to get the fuck out of here right the fuck now. This is too creepy. I am in a horror movie. And it looks like a Tim Burton movie too, by the way. Like the blue, bluish glow of the, the moon and the sky. And, and I got to get the hell out of here. This is creepy. The ranger brings the bones up and he's going to go analyze them. The officer says, takes our numbers down and says, uh, I will call you to let you know what our results are. Um, but thank you. You know, thank you for letting us know. He goes, I kind of have the feeling it's probably a deer. You know, deer get hit by cars all the time here. It's out in the middle of nowhere. There's no street lights. And typically when a deer gets hit, they like to go by water. And that's typically where they die. So that's probably what this is. But we'll do the analysis and let you know. I never did hear back from the officer. So to this day, I don't know if we actually found a human body. I still think it was a deer, and most likely it was, but I have never been able to find any updates on it, never heard from the cop, he never gave us the, his number to call. I don't know. But that is the freakiest, most creepiest experience of my life. I was truly in my own real life horror movie. So, have fun sleeping tonight.
And now, a shameless plug. And now it's time for another shameless plug, where I plug something of mine, shamelessly. And today, it's ParanormalAliens.com. It's a website that I have created that features all sorts of spooky and creepy items, things that come from outer space, things that come from the dark corners of your basement, things that come from the caves in the forest. Check out ParanormalAliens.com for all sorts of really cool and creepy items that I have personally created. Do you know someone who is a big fan of horror or the paranormal or is it to UFOs and aliens? Well, come to ParanormalAliens.com and find the perfect gift item. Check it out today, ParanormalAliens.com. And that was my shameless plug. Now back to the video.